Are you always coming up with ideas? Do you marvel at successful business owners? Do you hate being told what to do? Ever take things apart just to see how they work? Are you a dreamer? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. But first, a word from our sponsor. Pro Tapes and Specialties is the world leader in tape manufacturing and specialty conversion. With over 40 years of experience, in addition to our pro brand of high quality specialty adhesive tapes, we provide contract converting services that help improve your profitability, streamline your supply chain, and reduce inventory cost. We offer the most complete range of converting capabilities in the industry, such as cloth tape, double coated tape, specialty tape, paper tape, masking tape, vinyl tape, carton sealing tape, adhesive transfer tape, duct tape, foam tape, electrical tape, filament tape, foil tape, reflective tape. And the tape just keeps on rolling. Visit us online today at www.protapes.com or call us at 800-345-0234. Pro Tapes, it's just how we roll. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another fantastic episode of the Entrepreneur Enclave. I am your host, Kevin Wortham. Man, today I am thrilled to have a former student that I've never met <laughs> on the phone. Brooklyn, how are you? Hello, thank you for having me today. I am doing great. The weather is nice. Excellent. We're doing great. So now you say the weather, so that means where are you now? I am currently in Washington, D.C. Okay. And so you are a sophomore, junior, senior? I am a junior at the illustrious Howard University. All right, all right. And what is your major? And my major is interdisciplinary studies, um, where my concentration is community development. Yes. And then my minor is political science. Yes. So a little busy. No, 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 no. My my um, my uh, minor, I guess, dual degree is uh, urban studies, political science. But uh, so I just oh, want I just want to welcome you to, to the to the show. So as I was beginning the show, as I was opening the show, I said that I've never met you. And you and I, we met uh, through the, I guess, the internet. And you were in um, my, my online class. We did an entrepreneurial class uh, about two years ago, right? Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, it was like, about two know. years ago during COVID. And we expanded, yeah. we expanded our reach to um, offer the program to anyone that was available to participate in the entrepreneurial program online. So I am so glad to have you on the, on the show. So now what, what brings you to, to DC? Now, where, now, where are you originally from? Yeah. So originally I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I moved to DMV for school actually um, because I wanted to go to Howard and then I fell in love with the DMV area. So a little backwards for me. No, no, that's why I chose to come here. That's okay. Now, now, where did you go to high school in Pittsburgh? Yeah, so in Pittsburgh, I went to Shady Side Academy um, in Fox Chapel. Okay, yeah, because you know, I, I went, I attended Pitt, graduated from Pitt, uh, and so at one time, I also considered, and I still do. Pitt is like my uh, my second home. So I am so glad that uh, we get a chance to to connect. What did you like about Pittsburgh, or what do you like about Pittsburgh? Yeah, I love being in Pittsburgh because I feel like it's just such a place of community for me. And, it, you know, maybe because I'm from there originally, you know, born and raised. Um, I was able to attend a school in, you know, neighborhood where I grew up at as well as school in a neighborhood that was a little far from where I'm kind of used to. So I think that I just got a good um, upbringing in Pittsburgh in different locations. So I was able to see, like, the sense of community, how they connected, um, you know, city, suburbs. I mean, and I just love the community in Pittsburgh. You know, we have our sayings. You know, I come to college and I say, yes, no one knows what I'm talking about. Right. That, that, you know, that Pittsburgh accent that people say that I have when I'm at school or, you know, just common phrases and sayings or just places I know, playing I can say at home and feel comfortable. 
Um, so I love that about Pittsburgh. That's all right. Because when I when I first got there, they were saying Yin's guys. And I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I say the same thing, you know, here at college. And people look at me crazy. And I'm like, take me back to Pittsburgh. Yeah, yeah. So now you you said that uh, you, you came to Howard. Were there any other schools that you were interested in? Um, yeah, so whenever I was applying for schools, um, my top choices were Howard, Hampton, Spelman, and the University of Pittsburgh, um, as well as Allegheny College. Yes. So a little little bit mix of locations and types of schools, but those so, are my top five. And so why did you choose a historical black college? Yeah, so I attended a PWI from 6th through 12th grade. Yes. So I kind of knew from then, from, you know, at age 12, I really wanted to attend an HBCU um, just to get a different feel for education. Um, you know, I've been at PWI for some time, and I felt like it would really just benefit me to be around other Black scholars, um, you know, for quite some time doing my educational career it, it means a lot to me to just be around other students who look like me who think like me who typically grew up like me um but yeah we're all still from different places okay There's now, diversity even though we're all black yeah yeah now so if you if you were making a commercial for other students that might be on the platform listening uh what would you say to them as to why they should choose a historical black college yeah, so I think the one thing that, you know, I would say that everyone kind of says is this HBCU experience. You can't get it any, at any other school. It's it's not something you can get, you know, at a BSU or, you know, a Black Scholar Society at a PWI. It's it's great. It's so different than being at another type of school. Um, this HBCU experience, like, there's, like, people from everywhere. We're from all over the world. So we have different backgrounds, and it's just so culturally diverse um, in that sense. And because of that, there's you know, a lot of music that you learn, a lot of different perspectives and just being around people that have different ideas that look like you is just really great. Now you mentioned music. So have you gotten into the go-go scene? You know, I was just about to bring that up. You know, DC, <laughs> go-go music is, that's their go-to down the DMV. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of it. Yes. But it's something that I've, I've grown to learn. Um, you know, I can recognize it. I didn't know about it until I got to Howard. Um, you know, and the, the, the students here, you know, a lot of them are from the DMV. So on campus, when you go to events, you're going to hear music you're used to. You're going to hear go-go music from the DMV. You're going to hear, uh, you know, make a, I mean, sorry, uh, music from, you know, the Caribbean or yes. anything like that because we're from everywhere. So you're going to hear music in different languages, you know, different dance styles. You hear everything because we're from all over. And so, and so you, you mentioned that your minor is political science. Yes. Uh, how does that play into you being at the nation's capital do you think you would ever um, want to do some work at the nation's capital yeah so being you know in dc like this is really great for students who are in political science um, which is one of the reasons um why i chose power on top of it being an hbcu because of location yes. um you know we're so close to you know capitol hill the white house uh, congressional offices and you know being a college student i'm looking for internships um and they're looking for interns and it's great that I'm already here. You know, they're, they're not reaching out to, Hey, you're in Pittsburgh, but is there any way you can get to DC? I'm already here. And it just works out that, you know, I'm down the street. Um, I can get, you know, from school to work or anything like that without any hassle. And I, you know, I do have a strong interest in eventually one day working in an office somewhere, hopefully in DC for a while. Um, I have some internships that I'm in the process of, getting. I don't want to, you know, jinx myself or talk too much about them, but they're all in DC, um, you know, offices and everything like that. Wow. So what's, what's interesting is have you, have you noticed that the, uh, that gentrification is taking place around you and around Howard university? Have you noticed that? Yes. So that is, you know, part of with the community development being my major, that's one of the things that I actually study and want to work on. Um, okay. Once I am out of school and into my career field, um, but just even being around Howard University, there's a lot of gentrification going on. And, you know, I spent one year in on campus at Howard. Um, I spent a year at home. And now that I'm back as a junior in my third year of school, um, I actually live in Maryland. I can meet the campus every okay. day because uh, they don't they didn't offer um, on-campus housing for upperclassmen just because of, you know, limited space and COVID and everything. Yeah. Um, 
so I'm, I'm seeing, you know, three different things. I'm seeing what is it like my freshman year? What is it like, you know, my junior year coming back? And what was it like when I was home? Was different. There's a lot going on. Um, just like you said, right on Georgia Ave, which is, you know, the main street in front of Howard, um, where a lot of D.C. natives, D.C. residents hang out. There's a lot of small businesses there. Um, there's a lot of apartment buildings there. So there's a lot going on. But since I've been a freshman and now that I'm a junior going back to campus every day, um, it's completely different. And a, a lot of those small businesses are gone. Um, you know, they try to shut us you down. And Howard students, you know, we signed petitions to keep them from being shut down um, because they were in the process of gentrifying the neighborhood. And, you know, we're like, these are staples for students. Like, we eat here every day. You can't shut those restaurants down to, like, yeah. build a whole, to build a whole foods. Like, we don't want that. We want this, this like, fast food spot that the college kids go to. This is what we're used to. Yeah. You know, this is what D.C. natives are used to. So, um, just in the three years that I've been here, you know, I've seen restaurants come and go. I've seen, you know, grocery stores just randomly pop up. And I've seen, you know, the prices of living increase just right on Georgia Ave, Absolutely. where, you know, a lot of students actually look to live at. And now most of them can't even afford to stay there. I, I remember when I was at Pitt, we used to um, travel sometimes from Pittsburgh to Howard because I had a few friends that attended Howard University. So we would jump on the uh, PA Turnpike and get off at exit 12, Breezewood, and just come, yep. on, just come on into D.C. Is that the same way you travel? It's the same way. I and mean, that's, you know, when I drive home to Pittsburgh, that's exactly, you know, I know Breezeway is my halfway stop, and that's where I take my rest. Absolutely. <laughs> take your rest? Wait, wait, what, what? Take your rest? What's that mean? But, oh, well, I drive back to Pittsburgh from D.C. by myself a lot. So, you know, four hours straight through by myself, you know, I need a little break. Oh my God, you're too young for that. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I used to, I used to drive cause I'm, you know, I'm, I'm uh, from Trenton, New Jersey. So okay. I, I used to drive straight from, from Pittsburgh, well, from, from Pittsburgh to Trenton and from Trenton to Pittsburgh by myself, like five and a half hours. Of course I'm breaking the speed limit, but man, man come on. I just stopped. I just stopped for gas. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, yeah well, that's all right. But I, yeah, since I, since I, uh, I, I, I used to, uh, th- there's a, there's a spot above Georgia Avenue on Georgia Avenue called Petworth. Familiar with that, that little community? Petworth. I'm not familiar with that yeah, area. It, 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 it's right on Georgia Avenue, but it's like a few blocks up. And I have seen tremendous gentrification happen there. So it's, 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 it's remarkable that, uh, you are experiencing the same thing as well. Now, let me, yeah. let me ask this question because originally we were, we were going to talk about your whole entrepreneurial experience. At some point, would you want to move back into this entrepreneurial passion that you were expressing earlier on? Yeah. So I'm actually, you know, I haven't fully let go or let up on anything. Um, I'm in the works of, you know, still researching, still learning, um, you know, because I mentioned to you earlier, um, school's picking up. I'm actually trying to graduate a semester early, and I wasn't supposed to, but I think I can do that. All right. Um, so I kind of had to put my business just to the side a little bit, but I haven't let it go. So, you know, in the meantime, while I'm not, you know, making and selling currently, you know, my website says, sorry, we'll be back um, under construction. Um, you know, it's truly under, it's truly under construction. I'm not just giving up. Um, you know, I'm constantly, you know, watching uh, YouTube DIYs, YouTube how to, you know, I don't have any business, you know, experience other than what I've learned for myself. And, I, you know, I haven't taken any professional courses and I've, I've listened to um, your classes, but I haven't, you know, at college or anything done any business courses. So everything that I've done for my business, I've pretty much, you know, learned on my own or just dropping classes. Um, so I'm still doing that. You know, I'm researching what, are, what products are going to be popular this summer? Um, how do I grow my Instagram account? How do I grow a TikTok account? Um, what's going to be popular in the next few weeks? So I'm still working. Um, Understood. Yeah. No, no, no. no. I mean, I, I think that uh, based on where you are, what's going on in your life, your age, I think you have the opportunity just to sit back and find out what's best for you at that moment. So, so, so I, I, right. I'm certainly pleased that you are understanding where you need to go and where you've coming, where, where you're coming from. My my next question yeah. is, why was college so important for you? College was important for me um, for a few reasons. First thing, um, I know I mentioned, you know, my, some of my schools were Pitt and Allegheny College, but I really needed to get out of the city, um, <laughs> and I didn't realize that until I got until you know until I left the city. 
love yes. the city. I love Pittsburgh. Um, you know, I'm from there. My family's there. Um, I'm going to come back home, but I just feel like me getting away for a, a few years um, was really good for me. Yes. I am learning so many things that I would not have gotten at home. I mean, I've been living on my own for a while now. You know, I have my own apartment. And yes. Just, you know, traveling to school back and forth, like all of those things that I wouldn't necessarily do at home. You know, I'd still be living with my mom. I'd be, you know, going to college down the street. I just really needed this experience to kind of get out and grow for myself. Um, and I think, you know, going to college really did that for me. It, it's been a tremendous experience. Um, and then second, the career path that I, I want to go into, um, it was just so important for me that I actually, you know, properly learn how to be a qualified candidate in the workplace. Um, you know, I want to go into local level government. I want to go into urban development, urban planning. Um, so I felt like, you know, to successfully do that and to, again, you know, be a qualified candidate, I needed to go away to school to learn exactly what I needed to learn. Um, Understood. Now, now, you know, Pittsburgh has their, uh, and I may be wrong for saying this, they have their first African-American mayor, correct? Yes. Okay. Have you, have you been in touch with him about possible internships? I, um, so recently I have not been in touch with him. Um, I actually met him. I'm not sure if he even remembers. Just at some community events that I kind of used to try to keep myself in the loop with what was going on in Pittsburgh and, you know, keep myself in the face of people who could possibly um, provide me with internships or scholarships, anything like that for school. Um, as far as, you know, speaking to him with internships, I'm looking to stay in the DMV for a while. So okay. everything that I've been working on as far as, you know, looking for employment or internships have been in the DC area. Okay. Now, are you, are you thinking about uh, joining some type of a networking group or any type of sorority? Um, not right now. I'm not. Okay. And, but I'm just saying, if you were to join a sorority, which sorority would you join? If I was to, yes. Um, I'm not quite sure. Okay. No, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's okay. I didn't mean to stump you on that one, but. No, you're fine. Yeah. It's just something I haven't really thought about. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. So now in a, in a course of a day, what is your class load like? Yeah. So um, I'm super, super busy. Um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, yes. I am in class from. 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. Um, and then I work as a nanny, so I'm on the clock at, at 3 p.m., so I have about an hour in between classes in my job. Yes. Um, and then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have one morning art class, and then I tutor at an elementary school in D.C. Fantastic. Right after my morning class. Fantastic. And so the tutoring is something that you do on your own, or that yeah. was? Oh, so how, how did you make that connection? Yeah, so, um, there, you know, there's flyers all over Howard's campus. Okay. Um, you know, people that do everything, you know, people looking for college students for work, you know, people who are advertising their businesses. And, you know, one of them said, you know, tutoring for elementary students. And I was like, hmm, like, this is, you know, I love kids, you know, extra $2. It, it is paid. Um, you know, I, I love education. It's, you know, kind of in my field because we, we tutor at, um, you know, underserved schools, um, yes. you know, urban communities, schools that kind of, you know, got the hardest impact due to COVID, things like that. Um, so I tutor at one of those schools and I, it just really interested me. I called the number on the flyer and I was like, hey, I'm available twice a week. Is that okay? Can I come in? And they were like, sure. Wow. Well, first of all, I, I mean, I'm listening to you and, uh, man, I am so fascinated and so excited for you, man, the maturity. Thank wow. you. Wait, so now do you think that this level of maturity would have been, uh, on, on stage so soon had you stayed in Pittsburgh or, or this is just like maximizing your fullest potential now and early on? You know, I'm glad you asked that. I don't think that's something I thought about before. Um, but just kind of reflecting on, you know, my character growth and everything. Yes. I think it's a mix of both. Um, I feel like I was very mature at a young age um, just because of, you know, life events. And I did go to boarding school. So, I, you know, I've been kind of away from my parents or from my family for a while. Yes. Um, but I think, you know, going to college is actually being on my own, like, you know, not just kind of in just in Fox Chapel 30 minutes away, but actually four hours away. 
really made me grow up very fast, um, as well as, you know, having responsibilities, you know, going to school, working, and, like, you know, maintaining, like, an apartment. Like, it's a lot for a 21-year-old, and you know, I had to grow up. Absolutely. Now, now speaking of, of your age, do you have an advisor? Do you have a mentor? I wouldn't really say I actually had an advisor or a mentor, you know, someone who I specifically gave that title to. Okay. Um, yeah, um, just whenever I need help, I know it might sound kind of cliche, but that's my mom and, you know, one of my aunts are kind of the two people that I turn to. So, you know, I would say that they are my mentors. Okay. Um, you know, not necessarily someone that I reached out to, like, hey, can you be my mentor or someone that I kind of found that we really clicked with. Okay. So, so I, I think that uh, as you as you move along your collegiate uh, path, you're going to find that it's going to be necessary to have a mentor, uh, a, another one in in addition to uh, your mother and your grandmother, uh, because sometimes the mentor is going to be able to be uh, connected in those areas that your 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 other uh, mentors are not, and they're going to be able to vouch for your credibility and, and give you. Uh, immediate access to some of those people that uh, you need to be uh, in front of. So just, just, just give that some thought to, to, to. to yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And, you know, throughout my college career, I've definitely been trying to, you know, make sure I, before I leave college, at least, you know, I yeah. want to make sure that I find someone that, you know, I can call and just, you know, talk about school, talk about work, talk about my personal life, you know, someone I can really trust as, you know, someone maybe a little older than I am and just, someone that I really connect with. Um, I just haven't found that person for me. And, you know, it, it'll be someone, you know, a supervisor or a professor. I'm, I'm just waiting until I, you know, really feel like this is the one for me. Now, now speaking of your professors, have you found them to be supportive? Have you found them to be, like, encouraging? Definitely. Um, it, it's been kind of hard because of COVID. Um, you yes. know, I haven't seen a professor face-to-face since 2019 you wow. know, up until January of this year. Wow. Um, and yeah, so my freshman year, you know, I was working on, you know, you know, trying to find that mentor, building connections with professors, and then they sent us home for, two, for you know, a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just got back to face-to-face classes in January of this year. Um, the professors that I have now are actually amazing. Um, I think this is the, maybe the first semester that I have six classes, and okay. all six of those professors are great. Now, I really ask one of them. Now, when we when we talk about professors uh, at a, at a historical black college, are they really pro black, or are they are they saying anything different that you would not perhaps hear at another university? Um, from my experience so far, you know, everyone's been pro black. Even you know, I do have professors that are not you know, necessarily black, or you know, not even people of color. Yes. Um, but you know, working out of out of HBCU, you set yourself up to be around pro-black students, you know, especially our students, you know, we're going to fight for what we want. We're going to fight for any rights that we want, you know, regardless of protest, we're going to put up a fight. Um, so I think, you know, whenever people come to work at Howard, they know how Howard students are. Gotcha. I mean, you have to be ready for that. You know, if you can't just, oh, I like teaching this class. I'm going to be a professor at Howard. It comes with more than being a good teacher or being a good professor. I'm sorry. But, you know, they, they know what they're getting themselves into. You have to be pro-Black. You have to be up for a fight. Wow. Wow. Your, your wisdom is beyond your years. So I feel comfortable that we're going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was just thinking, I actually had a conversation with a professor today. Yes. Um, he actually thanked the students. Um, he, he's a Howard alum, and he said, you know, they protested, they had sex, they did all of the above um, yes. while he was a student. And he graduated in 2000, you know, 2022 to this day. We're still doing the same thing. Um, but he just congratulated the students and thanked the Howard student body for being the students that they are and really fighting for what they what they want. Um, awesome. He said this is very new for him, even though they've been, you know, pretty much doing the same thing for years, but we're just a lot stronger than they were. We're kind of a summary of what he said. Well, I, well you know, I, I think that um, you look at students my age and you look at students your age or, or, or people our age, and you can see the difference. I mean, you guys have so much at your fingertips 
it is yeah. it is like incredible, right? You know, you guys are just yeah. wake, you're waking up and you've got so many social media platforms that if you have a concern, you want to protest something, you want you want to make change, you immediately know how to do that. You know how to circle the wagon and 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 have right. a thousand people at a rally whereas, you know, old school like us, I mean we're beginning to <laughs> use social media, but back in the day, you know, you'd have to pass out flyers, it had to be a newspaper article, you would have to do you know, you know, some face to face talking, right? Where a lot of you guys don't right. have to do that. It's just go to the social media platform. So so I, I think that you guys are really, really uh giving us hope. So I, I thank you I thank, thank you for you. that. Now for a young person who's sitting at home and perhaps they do a gap year, would you suggest that they do a gap year if they're not sure if they want to go to college immediately? Yes. Okay. Um but I didn't have to think about that. You see how fast I said yes. Um, I, if, if you feel like college is not for you or if you're questioning it, I definitely suggest the gap year. Um, because one, it's college is expensive. Like, let's just put that out there. Yes. Um, like, let's not, you know, if you're not, you know what I mean? If, you, if you're not sure, why not, you know, save, save money until you know for sure. Um, there are other things to do. You know what I mean? I'm not one of the people who are like, if you don't go to a four-year institution, like, you're not successful. There are. There are so many things, you know, you can start a business, you can go to trade school, you can do a, you know, a two-year program, you can, you know, apprenticeships. There's, there's a lot of things out there that you can do that's not a four-year institution. Um, on top of college being expensive, it's very hard, um, you know, mentally, physically, like, school is draining. You know, yeah, yeah. waking up at 8 o'clock every day, you know, you were probably up until 2 a.m. writing a paper. You know, for someone who's not sure if they even want to be here, Yes. You know, you don't want to waste that effort or waste that time. You know, you get two years in and you're like, I hate this. And then you just don't finish. Um, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And even a gap year, you know, it can be a year of relaxing or it can be a year of working. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever, you know, everyone's path is different. Now, now Brooklyn, so so what, what's your motivation? What keeps you going? Um, I, I think one thing that keeps me going um, is just the support that I have for my family. That's okay. probably another thing I would want to mention for someone. I have so much support um, and for my friends, too, as well. Yes. You know, I can, you know, feel like I'm having a terrible day. I have this test tomorrow. I can't do it. I, I want to go home right now. Mom, please come get me some goofy. Yes. And, you know, I can call her. I can call my friends. You know, they're going to, hey, girl, let's go. Let me take you to dinner and we'll talk about it. And then, you know, we'll go study together in the library. Gotcha. So I think, you know, having a good support system is, is just great. Um, it goes back to, you know, the idea of having a mentor. But yes. even, you know, until I find that person, I have, you know, my homegirls, my family, they're going to make sure I'm okay. They're going to make sure my mental health is where it needs to be. Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that really keeps me going. I um, mean, the people that I have around me are so proud of me yes. um, that they're willing to do anything to make sure I succeed. So it, it pushes me to make sure that I don't give up, you know, even whenever I feel like I can't do it. I know the people around me are rooting for me. So I need to root for myself. That's awesome. Now, now you mentioned dinner. Now, have you ever been to Jen, uh, to a Ben's Chili Bowl? You know what? It's right near Howard, and I have never been there. <laughs> I, I think I'm the only person who has it. You, you, so, so when I think of uh, Ben's <laughs> Chili Bowl, that, that used to be on, on par with, uh, remember the big O downtown Oakland, or I mean in Oakland? Yep. Yep, Man, sure those are like iconic, you know, <laughs> must, must do, but the, uh, the O is no longer there, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I before you graduate, please go to Ben's Chili Bowl. <laughs> I sure will. I'm, I'm going to make that. Yeah, just, goal with my... just for dinner because they man the hours are crazy almost like the O used to be man it's like two three o'clock in the morning <laughs> sometimes but yeah i used to run up and down dc like crazy but i i enjoyed my my time just uh hanging out there That's visiting good. some of my friends but going going back to you five years from now yeah. where do you see yourself five years from now yes do you think you're gonna I do grad Retired? <laughs> Retired? <laughs> That's a stretch. <laughs> Do you no, think just kidding. Um, I, I have a few different options. Um, I, I think it's time for me to start kind of narrowing down what I want to focus on. Yes. Um, I do want to go to grad school. Um, I'm hoping to get my master's in public policy. Yes. Um, and then continue into the work field, just into you know, urban development, urban planning, city planning, anything like that. 
Um, I, I have yet to really narrow down a specific career path, but that's the area of interest I'm in. So very interested right now um, in uh, poverty rate, gentrification, and affordable housing. So yes. I'm hoping to get into that um, into that type of work field, uh, maybe nonprofit. Um, so there's that choice. Um, I do eventually um, want to, you know, a gap year, I guess I can call it, whether that's, you know, the time in between undergrad and grad school or, you know, starting to work and then taking a year off. Um, I'm really hoping to go teach English in China for a year. Okay, okay. So, you know, five years from now, I think that's a good time for me to go in. You know, I'll be, you know, graduated, undergrad, master's, a little bit of time in the work field and kind of go take a break to travel. Okay. Now, and, 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 may, and maybe you would find uh, a corporate job that would pay for your graduate school. That that would be ideal. That yeah, right, be right. So now you... you now you mentioned grad school. Where would you like to go? Uh, historical bl- uh, black college for for grad school, or or someplace else? Yeah, um, I'm thinking I want to stay um, at an HBCU. Okay. More than likely, um, Howard. I, I have haven't researched um, any schools. Actually, I'm I'm gonna be completely honest. I just haven't thought about exactly where yet. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I do, if I do, you know, end up back in Pittsburgh, you know, there's no problem with me going to Pitt. I'm open to Pitt and Howard right now because that's what I know of. Um, yes. I do have to you know, sit down and research places. A, a lot of people are kind of against going to undergrad and grad school at the same place, which I'm not sure why that's not looked down upon, but I'm okay with it. Okay. I, I love being in the DMV and I already know Howard and know the area so well. So I feel like, you know, I'd be comfortable staying here. Yeah. No, no, that, that's, that's, that, that, yeah, that's an interesting thought. And uh, people have different reasons as to why they, why they do what they do in the, uh, the selection or their choices or reasonings are, are, are multiple, multiple. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to wish you nothing but success on that as well. So now do you, do you ever find yourself recruiting uh, at some of the local high schools or elementary schools for, for Howard University? I, I would love to do that um, eventually. Okay. Um, the Pittsburgh, uh, Pittsburgh, Western Pennsylvania um, HBCU um, group, you can find them on Facebook. I am a part of them, uh, a part of their group. And, you know, they'll have, um, you know, events or they'll have uh, college students that speak at high schools. Um, I've been invited to come speak at a few schools, um, you know, just to give students information about how I've, you know, been in D.C. every time in the schools are at Pittsburgh. So I haven't been able to do that. But I'd be, I would be really um, honored to go back and speak about Howard and to, you know, encourage students to come, especially from Pittsburgh. Yes. Um, just, you know, want to get out and to get away, to get an experience. Um, and to the, come to an HBCU, I think that it's a great experience. Um, and then the other thing, I'm, I'm hoping that more students, you know, from my high school will attend an HBCU. So I, I hope, you know, in the future I can go back and kind of speak there okay. as well. Okay. So, so Brooklyn, with the, with the time that we have left, is there anything that you would like to share with the listening audience that we might have missed and, and not covered? Um, so, yeah, one thing that I just want to say is if you have a dream or a goal or a mission to do anything, um, I'm going to say just do it and, you know, try your best. You never know how things are going to work out. Um, again, you know, I said, I, you know, we met because I joined one of your business classes. Yes. I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to do something that I thought was fun. I thought it was cool. Um, you know, I was 18. I didn't know what I was doing. I was at Howard and I was like, hmm, I need some pocket change. I'm going to sell like accessories. Yes. And then it was, you know, I loved it. And I was like, I'm going to make jewelry. And, you know, my family was like, you don't know how to make jewelry. And I was like, watch me. Mm-hmm. And I made jewelry and I ran a whole business for over a year and I was, you know, hand making jewelry and, you know, I didn't let anyone stop me or, you know, I didn't care about what anyone said. And I, you know, I just went for it. Um, you know, people told me that Howard was my dream school and I wasn't going to get in because my SAT score wasn't high enough. Well, I made sure that I put blood, sweat and tears into that admissions essay and look where I am at my dream school. So I think, you know, both the things you want in life, the, the worst you can be told is no. Wow. Now, that's what, man, I, I want to end there, but I can't end there because I got to ask this other question. <laughs> no, no, that was, yeah. that was, that was fantastic. So listen, are you finding that you're at Howard? Do you find that there's more women attending college now? You said more women attending college? Yes. 
Um, yeah, I think so. Especially, you know, Howard, there are, you know, the, the ratio of men to women there is, is, you know, extreme on the women's side. But I think there's definitely, um, you know, increase in women in school, women in education. Just, you know, with it moving forward this time period, I think women are making a huge come up on just being more educated and make qualifying themselves in the work field. So I would and, say yes. And, and what, what do you, what do you, what do you, uh, why do you, why do you think that is? What what do you what would you attribute that to? Yeah, I I feel like a lot of it comes from you know people like not look down on women, but you know men are typically seen as you know more masculine, more dominant. It is you know this is one thing we're kind of studying in my sociology course. You know, like okay. some some careers, you know, they think oh like this is for men and this is for women. You know, but if it's a career that's typically for men and you're a woman and you want that, like you know, you have to kind of be overqualified to be chosen over in the end. Okay. Not all the time, but, you know, yeah, yeah. a lot of times, you know, wow. you have to be the woman with two or three degrees versus, you know, a man who only has one. You you have to do something to make yourself stand out. And it's, you know, that's going to school and that's kind of what we're, you know, working towards. It's, again, so much wisdom, man. I'm man. We, we're gonna we're gonna stay connected because I I want to I want to chart your success and man want to celebrate Thank that you. every every step of the way. Now, are you are you seeing a lot of racism uh, in the D.C. area? So I have not experienced um, anything personally. Um, you know, racist attacks or anything, but just being you know in D.C. Um, this is where they hold, you know, all the rallies, yes. all of the, you know, things like that, that are, you know, the, the truckers and all the, you know, Trump supporters. Like, you know, this is where they come. Yes. Um, so I, I try to steer away from that. Um, Howard does a really good job at emailing the students to let us know, hey, there's a anti such and such protest or rally going on in this area. You know, if you're a student, like, stay away and, like, you know, if you take public transportation to school or if you walk to school, like try to get on a Howard shuttle just okay. to avoid the areas. Wow. Wow. Brooklyn, this is, this has been fantastic. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to leave you uh, with the final thoughts. Uh, yeah. You, how do, well, first of all, how do people, can you give them your email address? So if people want to uh, contact you. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yes, um, please. Yeah, my email address is brooklynlowry at gmail dot com. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, any final thoughts, man? I, man, I'm I'm so excited. Wow, we I'm so excited. Yeah. So, any final Thank thoughts, you. Brooklyn? Any final thoughts? Um. No, I don't have any final thoughts. Um, if anyone you know listening, you know, I share my email. I I respond to anything. Um, you know, any potential like Howard students, anyone wanting to run a business or anything like that. Even even if anything that's like. Beyond that, I'll answer um, any questions anyone wants to chat. Okay, well, I, I hope that once this uh, podcast, this episode is uh, released, we're going to make you a superstar because your energy, your enthusiasm is contagious. Man. So I, I think that more, right, thank you. I think that more young folks need to be able to tap into not only yours, but their own. And I think that you could bring that out. Now, speaking of bringing that out, how would you encourage a young person to tap into their own I guess, hidden talents and their own hidden uh, motivation. How would you suggest that they tap into that? Yeah, I, I would suggest, like like I said before, just go go be a go-getter, you know, just go do it. If you think that you might be good at something, you're not sure, just try it. You you might fail, you might succeed, you never know. You don't, you, what is that thing, like you miss 100% of the shots you don't take? Yes. You just got to try Um How'd you, know me, that? how'd you know that quote? I, how'd you, how'd you, what? you know, I, I think it was on the on the gym wall at my elementary school. Okay. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but, you know, for me, I was always, I felt for so long, um, I was very humble. Um, I was very, you know, closed off, introverted. And I didn't know that I was, you know, talented in areas or I, I was good at things. And I was grateful to have, you know, the mom that I had and, the, yes. you know, the adults in my life that were like, hey, Brooklyn, you know, you're really good at public speaking. Or, hey, Brooklyn, you know, you can cook really good. You should do something with that. Yes. Um, so, you know, I had to use people around me that, you know, they reached out for me first. They said, they called up someone and said, hey, so-and-so, I know a young lady and she does this. And then, you know, I, I used people who could, to be a voice for me. You know, they made introductions via email, via phone calls, and yes. then I, I took the lead. Um, and, you know, once people started doing that for me so often, 
I was comfortable taking the lead myself. You know, I didn't, I no longer needed those e introductions. I no longer needed someone to reach out for me. Um, you know, I can do it myself. Wow. Wow. Wait, that's all right. Brooklyn, this has been a pleasure. I want to, as I said before, I want to wish you nothing but success, continued success. And you're always, always welcome back on the platform just to give us an update as to what's going on in your life, in your career. And, and I know that the career and your future looks extremely bright. I see it now as we, as we speak. And I know that you're always speaking that into existence. So I, I just want to thank you once again for uh, being a part of the Entrepreneur Enclave. And, and I know that whatever you do, it's going to be nothing but a success. Thank you. I will keep you updated. Absolutely. Brooklyn, let's talk and text at your earliest. We'll talk to you then. All right. See you later. All right. Bye. Thank you. That concludes another episode of The Entrepreneurial Enclave with Kevin Wortham. The podcast that focuses on building, maintaining, pivoting, planning, and investing in you, the entrepreneur. We hope you found this episode informative and enlightening. If you have any questions or comments about any of our episodes, please call 609-731-9311 or email kevin at minding-our-business.com. We look forward to joining us for our next one. Until next time.